So I'm just going to give you a quick walkthrough of how to install and configure the custom Facebook feed WordPress plugin. So I've just purchased the plugin and I'm on the confirmation page and the two things to note here are the license key and the link to download a zip file of the plugin. So here's a zip file that I've just downloaded and there's no need to open or unzip it, I'm just going to upload that directly to WordPress. I'm going to go to my test site here and I'm going to go to the plugins page and I'm going to add new. I'm going to upload and then I'm going to browse to the zip file that I've just downloaded and click install now. And I'm going to activate the plugin. So now the plugin is installed and activated. So I'm going to go down to the Facebook feed menu here on the left and go to the license page. And I'm just going to copy and paste in my license key here and click save changes. Now I'm going to activate my license. Great, so now we're active. So now I'm going to go to the settings page and I'm going to put in my access token and my Facebook page ID. If you don't have an access token or don't know what that is, click on the how to get an access token link here and the step-by-step -step instructions on how to get an access token. Same with the page ID. So right now I'm just going to paste in my access token and I'm going to paste in my page ID and I'm going to display 10 posts. And once I save the changes, all I need to do now is use the short code here and put that wherever I want the feed to show up on my site. So I'm going to go to a page and I'm just going to paste that short code into the page and click update. And now when I view that page, you'll see that the feed appears. And it's using the default thumbnail layout. Um, you can see the number of likes, shares and comments here underneath each post and a view to Facebook. So I can use the short code in a page post or widget. I'm going to go to the widgets page now. I'm just going to use the built-in text widget. I'm going to paste in the short code. And I'm just going to change a few things. I'm going to change the ID of the Facebook page. I'm going to change the layout. And I'm going to change the type of post that I display to just be photos. And there's a full list of all these shortcut options in the documentation section of the Smash Balloon website. I'm just going to click Save and I'm going to view my page again. And you'll see a second feed has appeared. And this is using the Smash Balloon Facebook ID and it's just showing the photos on that page. So you can see it has comments underneath as well. So great. So now I'm going to show you how you can customize your feed. I'm going to go to the Layout and Style page. So you can use these options to customize the feed in a bunch of different ways. I'm going to start off by adding some padding to the feed. And I'm going to add a background color. And now I can choose the types of posts that I want to display. So if I just want to display events, I can uncheck these. Or events and photos, or events, photos and videos. For now I'm just going to show photos. If I scroll down here to the post layout section, the default layout is thumbnail, but I'm going to change this to half width. And you can see the examples of the three different layouts here. I can also choose which parts of the post to display or hide. So if I don't want to display the date, I can uncheck that. I can uncheck the likes, shares and comments, or the view on Facebook link. For now, I'm going to keep all of these displayed. So now we have the typography section. So I can choose whether to wrap the post text in a paragraph, a header. I'm going to go with a heading 4. And I'll change the text size to 14 pixels. And I can select the weight and the color, which I'm going to make a dark gray for now. And whether or not to link the text to the Facebook post. Also the photo video description. I'm going to change this to be 12 pixels and I'm going to make it slightly lighter grey. For the event title, I'm going to make this a heading 5 tag and 14 pixels and I'm going to make it a dark grey. I'm going to choose to link it to the Facebook post. 
event details, I'll make that smaller, 12 pixels, and we'll make it a lighter gray. So now I can choose to display the date above or below the text. I'm going to go above, and I'm going to make it a 11 pixel, and bold, and we'll make it white. And then we'll choose the format to be this second one here. And before that, I'm going to put the words posted on. Perfect. So the link to Facebook, I'm going to make that 12 pixels and bold and also white. And I'm going to leave the text as it is. So down in this like, shares and comments section, I can choose whether I want to use light or dark icons, um, the color of the text. Um, I'm going to leave this all as is for now. So you can also enter your own custom CSS. So for example, I can add a border to my feed. I'm just going to add a one pixel border. And I'm also going to add a border radius of 10 pixels. There's a few other miscellaneous things down here too, like I can set the maximum post text length, which I'm going to set to 200, and the maximum description length I'll set to 100 characters. I'm going to show the light box at the bottom of my feed, and I'm going to change the background color to slightly lighter gray than the background. I'm also going to make the color of the line between the posts a slightly lighter gray than the background and I'm going to make it 3 pixels thick. So now if I save my changes, and we go back to the page, so as you can see our customizations have been applied. You can see our like box at the bottom here. So as you can see the styling is applied to both of the feeds. If you want to override the styling in one or the other, then you can declare some options in the shortcode itself. So if I go back to the widgets page, and I'll open up the text widget, and I'm just going to change a few options here. So I'm going to change the background color to be a slightly lighter gray. I'm going to change the padding, and I'm going to change the height of the feed to be 600 pixels. And if we refresh the page, you'll see that those changes have taken effect. So we have a height now of 600 pixels, slightly less padding, and a slightly lighter background color. So let's try one more quick example. I'm going to go back to the layout and style page and remove some of the options that I set. I'm still just going to display photos. I'm going to change the layout to be full width. And I only wanted to show the photos. And hide everything else. And I'll come down here now and remove the custom CSS that I applied. And I'm going to hide the light box. Actually, I'll show the light box. And I'll remove the background color and remove the separating line. So now you'll see that we have a full width stream of photos down the left. So great, now in my sidebar, I want to show the events from my page. So I'm going to keep the layout full and change the type of poster show to events. I'm going to get rid of the background color, the padding, and the height. Don't even need those. And I'm just going to make sure that I include the event title and the event details because I hid those in the settings on the layers and style page. So now if I click save, I refresh this page. Perfect. There we have our events on the right and our photo stream on the left. And you can add as many of these feeds as you like to any page or throughout the site using different page IDs, different layouts, different customizations for each. So if you have any questions about the custom Facebook feed plugin, then feel free to get in touch via the support form at smashballoon.com slash support. And if you want to see your own Facebook page displayed in the plugin, then you can use the demo over at smashballoon.com and you can put in your own page ID and see what the feed will look like 
for your Facebook page.